Lord, you 
worship and trust in chariot. Some trust in horses. But we trust in the name of our Lord. And he never disappoint. He is the most high. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The burden lifter. The yoke breaker. The story changer. The one who can change time and season. He is God. He is God. He is the everlasting God. The ancient of days. Hallelujah. 
Glory be to God. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Uh, Kingdom kids, can I hear your amen? Uh, they are out already. Amen. Okay, they are there. All right. Uh, may God be with them as they have their own wonderful service. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to thank God for a wonderful day like this. From the beginning of the service, we have seen the presence and the move of God. And all we can just do is say, Father, we thank you. I want to thank uh, the prophetess and the worship team for leading us in such a powerful worship. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I welcome each and every one. You are all welcome. And I see, I see beauty there, sitting there. You are welcome home. You are welcome. God bless you. Hallelujah. And I see Fuma sitting there at the back. Thank you. It's been a long time. You say, I will come. But thank you for coming. God bless you. God bless you. For everyone visiting on the first, second, third time, this is the house of your father. You are welcome. Please welcome yourself in the presence of God. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, it's a wonderful day. And the last week was another wonderful week where we started and we ended the Anastasis Conference. And I believe those of us who are there and those who join online, are you blessed? Hallelujah. We believe the Lord who started a great thing will continue to do great and mighty things. So next year shall be bigger. Next year shall be better. Next year shall be glorious. Hallelujah. Amen. And I just want to advise many of us when it comes to the time that we rest, we celebrate restoration. Uh, 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 resurrection is the time that we need to be in the presence of God. It's not a time of holiday and vacation. So I will just appeal and advise as we plan towards the celebration of restoration next year, plan your leave very well. Yeah. Hallelujah. Set that day aside that this day I have to be in the presence of God. If you need to go to farm, you need to go on holiday, plan it ahead of time. But from now, just plan and set those days aside. Those days are very precious and it is very important for us to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I also want to thank everyone who came for the strategic meeting yesterday. We had a wonderful time. We got the, 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 the apologies from few people and I believe we will give the feedback hallelujah yesterday the assignment and the department there have been some reshufflement in the cabinet can i put it that way there have been some reshufflement assignment have been shifted things have been done so those who are not around please you yeah, wait at the end of the service so that uh, you can be uh, giving the details of what happened amen, amen. Hallelujah. And uh, as you continue to take care of God's business, God will take care of your business. Amen. amen. Are we ready to go to the word of God? Amen. That amen is, is not convincing. Amen. Are we ready to go to the word of God? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bible to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7. We're just going to take one verse. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. If you are there, can I hear your amen? Okay, Deuteronomy is, uh, is on the page 175 of my Bible. Maybe it will help you to find yours. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. If you are there, can I hear a chorus? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to read from the Amplified. Therefore, know without any doubt and understand that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God, who is keeping his commandment and his steadfast loving kindness to a thousand generations with those 
who love him and keep his commandment. Father, bless the reading of your word and speak your mind to us. Reveal the mystery of the kingdom of God to us as we share in your word this morning in the name of Jesus. I pray that at the entrance of your word, there will be healing, there will be deliverance, there will be restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray as we go into this word, your right hand will move from chair to chair, it will move from house to house, from location to location, and it will declare order in the life of people in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Somebody shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. This morning I want to speak to a group of people and if you fall in that group I believe this is the word for you. Amen. amen. I want to speak to a group of people who have been disappointed by men. Hallelujah. Amen. Men have promised you something and they said they will do it with every confidence, but somewhere along the line, they fail to do what they promised to do. Yes. If you are in that category, I want you to know that it is in the nature of men to disappoint. That's right. <laughs> People break each other's heart in relationship. They tell you I love you today and tomorrow they don't love you anymore. Amen. They smile with you today and tomorrow they, 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 they frown at you. They cheat on each other. You go around the nations of the world when you watch the news, international news, you see protests everywhere. Citizens are up in arms. They are protesting due to one thing or the other. And if you summarize every reason why they are protesting from the north to the south is because their leaders have disappointed them. Politicians will tell you, we will do this for you. But when they get to power, they give you excuse. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. And as human beings, when you get disappointed, you feel hurt. You feel so much pain. You feel so much frustration. Children have been disappointed by parents. Uncle have disappointed their families. And at this time, they are looking at the disappointment because expectation was not met. Right. And any time expectation are not met, it sets you on a journey of frustration, hatred, and bitterness. You go into our communities, so many young men and young women are suffering because the uncle who promised the father to take care of them changed on his word at the death of the father or mother. Some are even so wicked that the words left for the innocent children are eaten up by family members and the kids are somewhere on the road strolling around. And they have decided they will never trust anyone. Hallelujah. That is the group, first group of people I want to talk to. Those who have been disappointed by men. I believe I have people like that in the house. Hallelujah. I believe I have people there online. Hallelujah. The second group of people are people who are holding on to the promise of God. They are holding on to the promise of God and they are waiting on the promise to come to pass. But it seems the promise will never ever come to pass. We have people like Abraham who all he had was the word of God. When God said leave your father's land, all he had was the word. There was no reference. It has never happened before. He just heard the word and he held on to the word. Amen. Are you sitting here this morning and all you have is the word of God. All you have is the promise of God. All you have is the prophecy that was released on you. Yes. And that is all that is. And you are waiting, you are waiting. 
and it seems this word is not coming to pass. Man de libro sotolia. You see, the first group of people, when men disappoint, they decide in their heart, they condition their mind that they will never trust anyone again. And the mistake they do is that they equate men with God. And when you come to church like this, and the word of God comes out and say, God is going to do this. You just block your mind. I have heard it before. Many have been disappointed not by family members only. Many have been disappointed even in the church. Many have been disappointed by their close friends. Many have been disappointed by their boss. The amazing thing is some have been disappointed by those they even helped before. They helped them. They were there for them. But when they expect them to come through, they give excuse. Say, sorry, I can't be there for you. And we equate men with God. And the second group of people will feel, when I wait, I wait, the enemy will come to taunt you. The enemy will, will, will come to harass you. You have the word. You are waiting on the word. You have the word. You believe the word. But time is going. And the enemy will come. To be making itself. Unpopular around you. Mm. Laughing at you. Mocking you. And you begin to see those. Who are not walking in the will of God. The enemy will project them into your face. And it will seem. They are being blessed. And the enemy will look at you. And say way la capella. That was what happened to Anna. She was praying and praying. She knew what God said. There shall not be a barren in my house. She prayed and prayed. But Benina came. She started having children like that. And she was asking, What is happening? If you fall into that group, I have a word for you this morning. And the word I have for you is not my word. It's the word that God has sent me to tell you. The Lord told me specifically that this morning somebody needs to hear this word. And the Lord said, go and tell them I am a faithful God. And I am here to announce to you, God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. You might be going through challenges right now. I heard clearly and I shared with the woman of God. The Lord said on Sunday, I should go and tell his people, I am a faithful God. And in obedience, I am declaring to you, God is faithful. You might be going through some challenges right now, but I want to tell you God is faithful. Man may have disappointed you. I am here to tell you, God is faithful. Your prayer may not have been answered. I am here to tell you, God is faithful. You might have fallen out of favor with God, but I am telling you, God is faithful. Things might not be going the way you expected. I am telling you, God is faithful. Are you waiting on the promise of God? And it is taking too long, like the case of Anna. Are you waiting on the promise of God? And you are waiting and it's taking too long, like you are like Abraham. I am here to tell you, God is faithful. You see, the story is that those who promise Men who promise you are capable of doing what they promise you to do. And God is also capable. Are you hearing me? Yes. Man is capable of what they tell you they want to do. God is also capable of what he said he will do. But here is the difference. Men are not faithful enough to follow through on their promises. But God 
is faithful. He's not only able, he is faithful. Hallelujah. Somebody wrote, anonymous quote, he said, people with good intention make promises, but only people with good character keep them. It's one thing to have good intention, but for that intention to come true, you need to have a good character. You need to have integrity. And that is the case with our God. He does not say it and not make it come to pass. He is a God of faithfulness. He is a God of integrity. Whatever he says he will do, he will do. No matter how long it takes, he will do it. Hallelujah. When we say God is faithful, what are we saying? What does it mean when we say God is faithful? Number one, it means God is dependable. You can rely on him. You can depend on him. Hallelujah. You can rest on him. When he calls you, he will not call you and leave you. You can depend on him. Somebody say, I will depend on God. Because he's a faithful God. When we say God is faithful, we are saying God is trustworthy. You can trust God. You can trust him. He will never betray you. We were talking yesterday at the strategic meeting about loyalty. God is not a God who receive you today and say, this is my beloved son. And you fall into some mess and he will deny you. That's not God. He is a faithful God. The Bible said when Joshua the high priest was standing with a filthy garment in the presence of God, the devil came to accuse him. And the Lord said, wait a minute. It might be dirty. It might be filthy. But it still remains my servant. Say, is this not the one I snatch out? Of fire. In case you feel you are backsliding this morning, in case you feel you are not in line with God, I am telling you, God is faithful. He has not thrown his back on you. Even when we are not faithful, God is faithful. He doesn't betray. When the enemy came, he could have been so ashamed of Joshua the high priest and said, Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, it is in the nature of men to do that. They will follow you. Man of God, I'm with you. My brother, I'm with you. And the moment they hear a story about you that does not sound good, they dissociate themselves from you. They betray you. Say, do you know Apostle Solomon? Ah, me. I only read about him on social media. You did not even confirm whether the story is true or not. But that is not the case with God. He doesn't betray. Hallelujah. Number three, when you say what, what is the faithfulness of God, we are saying God is consistent. He is constant in his actions. He doesn't say this yesterday and do another thing today. Hallelujah. Is somebody with me this morning? Hallelujah. Number four, what do we mean when we say God is faithful? It means that God is committed. He is committed to his people. He is committed to his purpose. He is committed to what he said he will do. He is committed. If God gives you a promise, is committed to see it come to pass. Amen. Irrespective of what is happening around you, he told Joshua, I have given you Jericho, yet you read that the Jericho was shut. Nobody was able to go out or come in. But God was committed. Amen. If God gives you a word and the enemy thought he will, he will close the door, I'm telling you, 
God is committed. Amen. He will make a way Amen. where there is no way. Amen. Let me bring you. If you are stranded in Oshakati and God said, I will take you to Ventu at the right time. And you wait on God. And you hear there is rain. And there is so much flood between Otavi and Tumen. No car can pass. God is committed. He will decide to change you from driving in a car. He will put you in a plane. And you will fly over the obstacle. Even when the enemy put obstacle, God is committed. He will make a way where there is no way. He said, this child will be given to you. Jesus will be born. And when Jesus was born, Herod rose up to kill Jesus. But because God was committed to his promise, he made sure that the angel of the Lord, one Joseph, carried the baby, go to eat it until I tell you to come back. God is committed. Can I announce to you, if you are waiting on the Lord and the same the enemy has done his word, God is going to make a way. He will make a way where there is no way. Because he is God of all possibilities. Hallelujah. Men might fail because it is in the nature of men to fail. But in his relationship with you, God is faithful. God does not cheat on his children. God does not gossip his children. God does not turn his back on his children because he is a faithful God. And when he says he's faithful, he's faithful in all areas. God is faithful. Psalm 119, verse 89. If you read tonight, he says, Your word, Lord, is eternal. Other versions say, Your word is settled in heaven. It stands firm in heaven. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. In this scripture, you see, we equated, the, the Bible equated God's faithfulness to his word. When they say God is faithful, they are saying he stands on his word. If God spoke something about a thousand years ago, he will still do it. That word still stands. He is faithful to his word because his word is an expression of his character. And his character is faithfulness. Hallelujah. Amen. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, he says, I am God, I do not change. I am God. I do not change. I can't come here and tell you I am Solomon. I do not change. I will change. Even in my appearance, I will change tomorrow. I might tell you I will be there. Call me anytime. But in winter, flu can keep me down. That when you even call, I am unable to pick my phone. It's the nature of man. But God said, I will not change. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 verse 35, he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Hear me very well. As long as you are alive and you are still holding on to the promise of God, God's word will come to pass in your life. Amen. The only thing that will make you to stop Holding on to the word of God is when he does not speak the word. But if the Lord speaks it, it will surely come to pass. And I prophesy over somebody this morning, God's word is coming to pass. I say God's word is coming to pass. God's word will surely manifest in your life in the name of Jesus. What has the Lord spoken to you? What have you received from the Lord? What prophecy has been spoken over your life? What rema word did you receive when you read the word of God? If it is truly from God, 
I want to advise you, hold on to that word. Amen. Hold on to that word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hold on to the word. Hold on to the word because Isaiah 55. 10 to 11. It's one of the scriptures I love. He said, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and make it bad and floody, so that it yield seed for the sower and bread for the eater. 11 said, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire, and achieve the purpose for which I send it. Every word that comes out from the mouth of the Lord. Somebody might say, okay, hello, I didn't see God face to face, and I didn't hear him speak. If a man of God stand in front of you, and he speak his word, it is God speaking through the man of God. It's part of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. In First King, I believe, chapter 17, verse 1, if you read, you can write it down, read at all. Elijah said, there shall not be rain for three years except at my word. Except as whose word? Elijah's word. When you get to First King, chapter 18, verse 1, the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Go and tell Ahab, I am ready to send rain. Mm -hmm. Who spoke in 1 Kings 17? Elijah. It was Elijah the human, but it was God through Elijah. Mm -hmm. So the word that comes through the man of God becomes the word of God. Because as I am standing here, I am an ambassador of Christ. And every word I proclaim to you becomes the word of God. If there is drought in any country and the ambassador there without consulting with the president of Namibia say, my country will donate hundred thousand dollars. That word is binding on the president. The president will not call the country and say, actually, he did not consult me. So we are not binding by the word. No. Whatever he says there is binding. If he says, my government will give 100,000, immediately the president must look for that 100,000, whether he has it or not. Yes. If you want to keep his integrity. Yes. So when I declare, a woman of God declare, a man of God declare any word from the word of God over your life. It is the word of God. And God is faithful. He will make sure it comes to pass. Amen. Hold on to that word. Don't give up on that word. It's coming to pass. Hear what the word of God said in Hebrew chapter 10 verse 23. He said, let us hold family we to the hope we claim to have. The God who promise is faithful. You might be going through storm right now. I'm reminding you. God is faithful. Hallelujah. God is a keeper of his word. He called Abraham. He was faithful. In the midst of all the challenges, he kept his promise. I will give you a time that will become an heir. Even after the delays, the child came to pass. Joseph had a dream. He would become great. He ended up in the pits. He ended up in the prison. But at the end of the day, everything works together. God made a way and his word came to pass. Maybe you are in the pit of life right now. Maybe men and women have disappointed you. You are in the pit and you don't even see what is going on. I'm telling you, God is bringing you out. Maybe you find yourself in Potiphar's prison and you know where I am now. It's not where I'm supposed to be. The promise of God does not relate to my present experience. I want you to hang on. God is coming. Help is on the way because he who promised is faithful. 
You can go in the Bible and you see the example of God's faithfulness. In, George, in John chapter 11, they came to Jesus and they said, your friend whom you love is dead. Jesus said, he's not dead, he's only sleeping. But in the natural, Lazarus died up to the point that he was thinking. But the God of faithfulness came through and they called him out. Lazarus, come forth. Maybe your dream has died. Maybe that which you are trusting for has been put in the prison. But I'm standing on the word of God. I speak to your dreams. I speak to your prophecy. I speak to the promise of God. Come alive in the name of Jesus. I break every power of the grave over your life, over your destiny. Right now, in the name of Jesus. I believe when, when, when Jesus said, this child, the, the, this friend of mine will not die. And they saw Lazarus practically die. They buried him. Day one, day two, day three, day four, they must have lost hope. In fact, one of the sisters of Lazarus said, when Jesus said, I'm the resurrection of life, say, I know when we get to heaven, Jesus said, I'm not talking about heaven. I'm talking about here. Maybe you are in a situation you feel it is impossible. It is over, it is over. Listen, when the devil comes into your life and he writes a sentence and he puts a full stop, I am here to put it is over. The enemy might tell you it is over, but I am here from the throne of God speaking on behalf of God who is faithful that it is not over. It is not over. I want you to declare over your life. It is not over. Because God has not said. It is over. He is a God of faithfulness. He is God who keeps his word. However, when we go to the scripture that we read. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Yes, God is faithful to his word. But you have a responsibility. You have what? A responsibility. Let's go back to that scripture. Hallelujah. Let's read that scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Say, therefore no, without any doubt, and I want you to understand. I'm reading from the Amplified. Remind you. So it might be a little bit different from yours. Understand that the Lord your God. He is God. He is the faithful God. Who does what? He keeps his covenant. And his loving kindness. To a thousand generations. Now, here is your responsibility. Please read that verse for me. The last sentence. He kept his covenant, he is faithful to those who love him and do what? Keep his commandment. Hallelujah. To those who love him and those who keep his commandment. So for you to continually experience the faithfulness of God, you need to love God. And you need to keep His commandment. And He said, my commandments are not burdensome. My commandments are just simple set of rules, guidelines that I want you to do. And I'm going to unpack that for you right now. Hallelujah. So when you love God, what do you do? You spend time with Him. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are in love with someone, you spend time. Mm -hmm. eh? Amen. You spend time. <laughs> love is a wonderful thing. You spend time. You don't stay away from someone you say you love. You spend time. When myself and your mother prophetess in those years, we were still doing boy and girl when I'm still saying 
I have a thing, you know. I was far away, 25,000 kilometers away. And then there was no even smartphone was not regular. You call, we use landline. It was a distant relationship. And I'm telling you, because it's far away, every month I spend almost all, even not not almost all my salary to buy a charge card so that we can be online. I have a message, a, a, a staff who assists me in the office. I will send him, Kazim, go buy me a car. Then you go and buy the car. Then I will finish. I will call again, Kazim, go buy me a car. Then you say, oh God, who is this person you are talking to? There was a time she went on, to South Africa on a course and she was in the hotel and she called and we spent $8,000. $8,000. On phone calls. <laughs> but we are not moved by the money. It was love. So when you love God, you spend time with God. That's what I want to bring up. You spend time with Him. You spend time in His Word. You will love His house. You will love His household. You will love His Word. You will keep His Word in your heart. Hallelujah. You will love to serve him. You will love to run errand for God. When it is about God, you don't mind. You will go. You will do everything because it is for God. Why? Because you love God. Hallelujah. You will love to give to him. You won't give excuse because love will override the value. Listen, when you love God so much, money has no value. It's true. Yes. I'm telling you, nothing will be too small or too, too big to give for God. And God said, I am faithful to those who love me. Amen. No wonder David experienced the faithfulness of God. No wonder when the enemy come, they could not kill David. Why? Because we could see the love of David for God. If you want to experience the love of God, child of God, you need to love him. You need to demonstrate your love by the way you read his word, by the way you worship him, by the way you serve in the house of the Lord. Many will say, I love God. You can't love God and be online. You can't be a, say, I love God and you listen to this message, you listen to that message, you listen to this message, but you are not committed into a house. You don't love God. Hear me well. You can coach me anywhere. Because those who love God are the ones sponsoring that ministry that make the message available for you. You love Apostle Solomon. And prophetess Golda, when they come online, they minister in power. We give God glory. But do you know when they are online, they spend money to put that data. It is those who love God that are sponsoring the ministry. Can I speak the truth? Lockdown came, they unlifted lockdown. Many say, no, I'm comfortable staying at home. It's a different thing when you are still trying to find your feet and looking for where to worship. But don't stay too long. God does not take long to answer such prayers. Yeah. Yes. True. You can have ten fathers. Hmm. Apostle for Panama is my father. <laughs> Prophetess from Jericho is my mother. You have all of them. You have connection with their world. But how are you committed? to advancing the work of God and the, 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 the ministry. If you continue in that spirit, do you know what you are? You are a pirate. Sure. Pirates don't invest in any cargo. All they do is to jump on any ship, grab what they want to grab, and off to the next target. Don't be a spiritual or a Christian pirate. Be committed and serve God. It is through your service that we will see your love for God. And when you love God, you will be faithful. Amen. 
is a faithful God, but to those who are committed to loving him. The second thing is, is committed and is faithful to those who keep his commandment. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. Go from your country, your people and your family. Go to the land I will show you. And when he gave instruction, the blessing follows. Hear me. Anytime God gives an instruction, every instruction from God is accompanied by blessing. Verse 2 begins to tell him, and in that verse 2, you see several blessings that accompany the possibility of obedience of that commandment. Go, leave your family, your home, to a place I will go, I will give you. And the Lord said, if you do that, these are the promises. Number one, I will make you a great nation. Number two, I will bless you. Number three, I will make your name great. Number four, uh, you will be a blessing to others. Number five, I will bless all those who bless you. Number six, I will curse anyone who place a curse on you. And number seven, all nations of the earth shall be blessed to you. Sevenfold blessing that accompany the promise. If you check the life of Abraham, did God make this word come to pass? Yes. God bless him, God bless Jacob, God bless Isaac, and today we are here blessed because somebody obeyed God from thousands of generation to generation. Obey God, keep his commandment. One of his commandments, and I'll be ending with this, is call upon me in the time of trouble. And what will happen? will answer you. Samson got into trouble. What did he do? He obeyed his commandment. Call on me. What did he do? Say, Lord, help me to defeat all this enemy. And God answered. That was the desires of Samson. If Samson had prayed, deliver me here. God will deliver him without him being dead. But he decided to die. God said, is that is your wish? I will give to you. Are you here this morning? And you feel you are in trouble. And you feel things are not going well. He said, if you keep my commandment, I will be faithful. One of his commandments is, when you are in trouble, call upon me and I will answer you. And things not going well. You love God and you are keeping his commandment. Fulfill that commandment by calling upon him. Call upon your father. He is faithful and he will make sure he do, he do what he promised to do. Hallelujah. So the message I brought to you this morning is to remind you and to tell you that your God is God and is faithful. You will experience that faithfulness if you continue to love him yes. and you continue to keep his commandment. Hallelujah. Celebrate God this morning and let us rise up as we go to pray. Let us pray this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to lead us in some prophetic declaration this morning. I want you to begin to thank God. Thank God you are a, a God of faithfulness. Thank God that you will never forsake me. Thank God that you will never leave you. Bless him this morning. Open your mouth and begin to thank God. Hallelujah. You are faithful, faithful are you, Lord. Yes, you are. You are faithful, faithful are you, Lord. You are faithful, you are faithful, faithful are you, Lord. Make sure his promise comes to pass. 
say faithful God. Yes, yesterday, today, and forever. But the problem lies with us. How much do you love God? How much do you keep His commandment? I want you to pray this morning. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me to love God the way I should love Him. Help me to love His Word. Help me to love His work. Help me to love His people. Help me to walk in this love. Halibo soto, open your mouth and pray. Lord, help me. Holy Spirit, help me to love God the way I should love Him. Let me love His work. Let me seek first His kingdom. Let me put God above me, above my desires. Help me, Lord, help me. I need you. I need you, King of Glory. I need you help me not to be self-centered. Let me love you the way I should love you. Let me worship you the way I should worship you. Help me to spend time in your presence the way I should. Oh Lord, help me, help me. Hey, Kalabosi Kayoba. Let's get the most here. Help me to walk in the way of love. Help me to walk in love. According to your word. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're not going to pray. Oh Lord, I cannot keep your commandment in my flesh. I cannot do it by myself. I need you. Help me, Holy Spirit. I depend on you. Tell God to crucify flesh. Everything that will not let me obey you completely. Take it away. Take it away. Begin to talk to your father this morning. Marabo Sotonia. Reketelibo Sotonia. In the name of Jesus. Ah. And you 
you are there, I want you to lift up your hand to say, Lord, today I want to commit my heart into your hand. I want to invite you into my heart. I want to be a child of God. I want to be saved for sure. I want to be born again. If you are there, let me see your hand as you lift your hand. I just want to pray with you. Thank you for those hands. Thank you for the hand. Hallelujah. There is nothing to be ashamed. Many of us, if not all of us here, we pray that prayer. God is faithful. No mistake is too much. No error is too much. He's faithful. His blood, his blood is powerful to blot out every sin and transgression. Thank you, Jesus. I'm coming, man. Just say after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you are a faithful God. I come back to you. I surrender my heart into your hand. Give me a new heart. Wash me clean with your blood. Make me whole. Make me brand new. And from this day, I confess that Jesus, you are my Lord. And from this day, I will serve you all the days of my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, for everyone that prayed that prayer from their heart and those who are online, I commit them into their, your hand. I pray through your faithfulness you will keep them. Turn their life around for good. Make them a soldier in your kingdom. Let their life shine that people will see and glorify you. Seal them with the promise of the Holy Spirit. And from this day, the enemy will never have access into their life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a faithful God. If you are here, you say, I am not where I'm supposed to be. But I want to come to the Lord that through his faithfulness, he will restore me. He will restore my finances. He will restore my health. He will restore my, my relationship. He will restore everything that concerns me. If you are that person, I just want you to come forward as I'm going to pray for you. Because he's a God of faithfulness. That which he said he will do, he will do. Everything the enemy took away from you, he will restore. Because he's a God of faithfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you are online, just go on your knees to connect to this prayer. Hallelujah. Just type, I connect, I connect. And go on your knees. God of restoration is a God who is faithful. And he's saying, I am appearing to you this morning in my faithfulness. I am coming to you mightily in my faithfulness. Hallelujah. I surrender. Faithfulness is great. Great is his faithfulness. And as you are there for those who are in the house and those who are online, begin to tell God. Tell God, Lord, this is where I have missed it. But I've come back to you. Tell God, this is what the enemy has taken. I want you to restore. Tell God, this is where I've been afflicted. 
straight to God. Aliba Shatalia. And trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Begin to talk to God. Then the world might tell you it is over. They might be mocking you. Ah, you might have given up on yourself. But tell everything to God. Is your father is listening? He is listening. And all I will do is to come and agree with you. Hallelujah. He's a God of integrity.
which you have entrusted in the hand of the Lord, heaven open upon you. From this moment, begin to experience the faithfulness of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just lift up your head as I release the prophetic word over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak over your life. Every trace of stagnation, every trace of delay is hereby removed forever in your life. In the name of Jesus, everything that is causing delay to your answers is hereby removed. In the mighty name of Jesus, I stand on the word of God. In the name of Jesus, every demonic arrow that is fired into your life, I remove them and I send them into the ocean. In the name of Jesus, every seed of the enemy that has caused paralysis in your life, paralysis in your finances, Paralysis in your situation. Paralysis in your work with God. Receive the touch of God. Receive the touch of God. Right now and be made whole. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every power. Every force. That is robbing you. Of your peace. That is robbing you. Of your joy. Robbing you. Of your testimony. Today. On this altar. We command the ground to swallow up those power in the name of Jesus. I release the healing power of God, the healing power of God to flow in this house from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet in the name of Jesus. If there be any door that has been opened in your life, knowingly or unknowingly and the enemy is using that door to torment you to torment your family I plead the mercies of the Lord and the faithfulness of God we close that door in the name of Jesus every strong man that have gained access into your life into your work with God into your marriage into your own we arrest those strong men. We bind those strong men. And we cast them out in the name of Jesus. God, you said, tell them, I am a faithful God. And I've delivered your word. And anytime you send your word, Signs and wonders always accompany. I decree today, everyone that is here, everyone that is online, everyone that will come across this message, let the power that raised Christ from death do a great and mighty thing in their life. In the name of Jesus. Every dry bone in your life, yes. I command it right now. Yes. Receive the bread of God in the name of Jesus. The power that raised Lazarus from death is the power that raised Jesus from death. That power is available. I invoke the power of resurrection to be at work in your life in the name of Jesus. And from this moment, I decree you are blessed. Amen. That which the Lord has released from you and the enemy is denying you to get access to, this hour, I remove the enemy. Receive that which belongs to you. Receive that which belongs to you in the name of Jesus. In this week, somebody is receiving a call. A call that will change your life. When they call you and the call comes and they say it's for interview, just pack your bus and get ready to receive. I said pack your bus, get ready to receive.
ministry in the name of Jesus. The Lord is releasing fund in the hand of someone. I see money exchanging hands. Money exchanging hands. Kaliba Sata. Money exchanging hands. As we go in this week, it shall manifest. It shall manifest. It shall manifest. You want to study? And you are worried how will this fee be paid? God is faithful. Money is exchanging hand. Money is exchanging hand. Help is coming from above. Help is coming from above. In the name of Jesus. It's enough. I decree your season of tears over. I decree your season of sleepless night over. I decree your season of worry over. That which is yours is yours. And the Lord will continue to fight for you. The Lord will continue to show his faithfulness for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Put your hands together. Thank you. I think we can do better than that. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Just put your hands together and give a shout. Give a shout to the faithful God. Give a shout to the faithful God. Hallelujah. Please be seated in his presence. He's a God of integrity.